back to the show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Andrew House. Good afternoon, and to those of you joining us uh, from around the world, good morning, good evening, and welcome. Uh, it's a thrill to be with you here today. The stakes are high for what we're going to show you. Today marks a moment of truth and a bold step forward for PlayStation as a company, as creators and innovators, and as industry leaders. At Sony, we've always talked about our entire portfolio of technology and content, blockbuster titles, and successful entertainment franchises. Today, we'll show you how we're strengthening the PlayStation ecosystem through hardware, software, and network capabilities that when unified, create truly magical experiences that can only be found in our world. We'll show you how we're making access to our content and experiences, social interactions and titles vastly more simplified and streamlined. And we'll show you the many ways in which the living room is no longer the center of the PlayStation ecosystem, the gamer is. With the gamer as the focal point for our efforts, We've created a platform attuned to consumers' changing behaviors and an evolving sense of play. 
ease of access, regardless of location or device, has been an absolute priority. With mobility and the ability to share content and experiences becoming an increasingly important part of the gaming experience, connectivity between devices and the ease with which they connect has been essential to meeting the demands of today's casual or core gamer. Our vision for the future is consumer-centric, developer-inspired, and characterized by an unwavering commitment to phenomenal play experiences. These experiences can happen on a console or a handheld device, and we're meeting the demand for mobility with the most powerful handheld gaming system ever created, PlayStation Vita. In fact, the operating system and chipset inside PlayStation Vita is so powerful, we think it could bring significant value to gamers' living room experiences. We know the potential for expanding PlayStation Vita to the living room is real and promises to deliver amazing gameplay and multimedia. We'll be talking more about this exciting initiative later this year, but it's safe to say that we'll continue to unlock PlayStation Vita's potential. We're also focused on expanding the world of PlayStation content to smartphones and tablets via PlayStation Mobile. We've strengthened the PlayStation Network to offer more groundbreaking indie titles such as Unfinished Swan and the critically acclaimed Journey. And we're bringing more convenience and value to our gamers through programs such as Instant Game Collection and Day One Digital. Every facet of PlayStation will continue to become more powerful and as you'll see today, remains at the heart of every new innovation we create. While our Sony heritage has long been defined by superb engineering and technology unleashed via powerful hardware, we also knew success would rely not only on a package of next generation technologies, but on reconceptualizing how the next generation gamer would want to play. While we once had changed the gaming landscape, now the consumer was changing us. From mobility to multi-format play to greater community engagement, as well as platforms de designed to enable access to entertainment, social media, and more, the demands for a new platform were clear. Conversations with the wildly talented and ambitious minds found within the developer community helped us understand what would define the new and the next for them. We painted a picture of the future that would revolutionize not just the console, but would have implications across our entire portfolio of products. Our immersion into the gaming experience at every touch point resulted in a renewed passion for play and keen insight into the demands any new platform would have to meet to be relevant and extraordinary. Today, we will give you a glimpse into the future of play a reimagination of the gaming experience that has been developer-led, consumer-inspired, and powerfully and thoughtfully engineered by Sony Computer Entertainment. It's designed to make accessing the content gamers love easier than ever. It's conceived as the most personalized gaming experience available today. It is consistent with our heritage in gaming, delivering the most powerful platform ever. It is simple and adaptive, with socially enriched content. Expect worlds to come alive with greater fidelity and intensity than ever before. Expect the best franchises to be even better. And expect powerful opportunities to connect and play and stay informed even when away from the primary console. This is the foundation of our next generation platform, PlayStation 4. Thank you. We believe that PlayStation 4 represents a significant shift from thinking of PlayStation as merely a box or a console to thinking of PlayStation as a leading authority on play. For gamers around the world, PlayStation is the best place to play. PlayStation 4 will unleash imaginations to create next generation experiences that surpass gamers' wildest expectations, while also allowing developers to explore new business models that offer more flexibility, including episodic and free-to-play. Today, we are revealing the genesis of an expanding idea about the future of play, an idea with enough vision to lead the ever-changing landscape. 
and an idea founded on the conviction that we must give gamers the kinds of multi-dimensional experiences they not only expect, but quite frankly, deserve. Over the next couple of hours, we're going to show you what the new PS4 is capable of, what innovations it is bringing to gamers, and what central ideas and principles drove its development. You'll meet the minds who form the creative soul of the gaming community, who are pushing the boundaries of play. One of those great minds is the gentleman I'm about to introduce. At the age of 17, he joined Atari, and by age 20 had his first major design success with the arcade game Marble Madness. Future successes were many. He worked with Sega on Sonic the Hedgehog, served as president of Universal Interactive Studios, and was part of the creative team on such blockbusters as Crash Bandicoot, Jack and Daxter, and Ratchet and Clank. Now, as our lead system architect on the PlayStation 4, he has been able to harness the engineering prowess of Sony Computer Entertainment with deep developer insight to create a next generation platform that sets a new industry standard. It is my great pleasure to introduce lead system architect, Mark Cerny. <laughs> thank you, Andy. Thank you for the warm welcome, and thank you all for being here today. As um, Andy mentioned, my role on the development of the Next Generation platform started about five years ago. At that time, we began to look at how the, the console architecture could free developers from painful technological limitations and enable them to create the game experiences that they'd always been dreaming of making. We also looked at how the whole PlayStation ecosystem could be evolved as well to allow the player to take a dynamic, preference-driven path through the world of content. So when we started this process, it was the early days of the PlayStation 3, which is to say, at a time of great transition in technology and how we use it. Every major console, all the way from the Atari 2600, which was the dominant console when I started in games some 30-something years ago, all the way up through the PlayStation 2, had pretty much been a single-purpose device. Insert the cartridge, the CD, the DVD, power it on, play your game. That's all they did, and, and that was fine. That was the world we lived in then. But at the time of the launch of the PlayStation 3, all of that was in flux. The, the world was becoming a connected place, and a single device was now expected to provide a, a range of services and applications. Now, PS3 has done pretty well in these respects. It's the top platform for Netflix. But as a console designed before this revolution hit, there are limits to the functionality that it can provide in this new world. In addition, since the launch of PlayStation 3, um, we've seen a proliferation in the number and variety of devices that people own and interact with. With so many platforms to support, much less value is found today in exotic technologies such as blast processing or a supercomputer on a chip. I'm proud of what we accomplished with Cell on PlayStation 3, but at the same time, the need to radically customize technology can interfere with the design innovation that's so central to game creation. So for PlayStation 4, while we knew that the core performance of the console would be vital to its success, the cross-disciplinary team that we assembled had several additional goals. For one, we wanted to make sure that nothing would come between the player, excuse me, the platform, and the joy of play. When I think back to the launch of the PS1, there was a, a real fun factor that was an intrinsic part of the PlayStation DNA. The whole world was our audience, and, and we had a remarkable time evangelizing the message that gaming was fun. We also wanted to be sure that the system architecture could fluidly connect the player to a, a larger world of experiences and provide easy access to everything PlayStation has to offer across the console and mobile spaces and the PlayStation network. And finally, we wanted to hear from developers. We spoke to dozens of the best teams in the world. We wanted to know what was important to them. We wanted to make them happy. Because if they were happy, we knew we could unleash the uh, creativity and innovation that would result in a true next generation experience. Our goal was to create an architecture that would facilitate the expression 
of their ideas. Now, we couldn't come right out and say in 2008 or so, what would you like to see in a next-gen console? We had to talk our way around the topic. But they knew what we meant, and their comments were invaluable in crafting these system specs. And we were able to create, in PlayStation 4, a platform by game creators for game creators. It is a powerful and accessible system, and it has a deep feature set to support the ongoing development and evolution of gaming itself. Now, the architecture that we chose is, is like a PC in many ways, but supercharged to bring out its full potential as a gaming platform. For the uh, CPU, we chose the most familiar architecture on the planet, the x86, uh, allowing us to tap into over three decades of programming expertise. For the graphics processor, we decided to use a highly enhanced PC GPU, something that would be easy to develop for in the early days of the platform lifecycle, but at the same time, a, a GPU with remarkable long-term potential. And for system memory, I'm proud to announce that we are equipping the system with eight gigabytes of high-speed unified memory, both satisfying the number one developer request for ease of game creation and also increasing the richness of content achievable on the platform. And this system memory is backed by the massive local storage that only a hard drive can provide. Overall, this architecture is designed to ensure that the very best games and the most immersive experiences will reach the player. Now, the next few demos are live, so I get the pleasure of sharing with you, for the first time, the new controller. And here it is, the DualShock 4. Thank you. So, during the development of the DualShock 4, we worked with key partners in the development community to enhance the feel of the joystick and the trigger buttons. The uh, result is a much tighter sense of control over in-game actions. We also um, took this as an opportunity to enhance the rumble capabilities and reduce the controller latency. And finally, we added a few new features. Um, a touchpad as a new form of input, a share button and a headphone jack to enhance social interactions, and a light pad as a, uh, excuse me, a light bar as a simpler, more friendly way to identify players. And this new controller was designed in tandem with a second peripheral, a stereo camera that can sense the depth of the environment in front of it and track the 3D position of the controller via its light bar. Now, this first live demo it, uh, shows the payoff from the augmented PC architecture. This is Unreal Engine 4 from Epic running in real time on prototype hardware. There's some very sophisticated technology here, GPU accelerated particle systems and realistic transmissive materials with substantial subsurface scattering. And this is all running in real time. I can look around as the animation plays using the touchpad input. Not only do we have the power to drive this level of application, but we also have in PlayStation 4 an extraordinarily easy conversion path from the PC world. Now, as to how we accomplish this, <clears throat> PlayStation 4 is centered around a powerful APU that combines eight CPU cores with a state-of-the-art GPU with almost two teraflops of computational performance. Putting CPU and GPU on the same die gives them streamlined access to a common pool of memory. And with PlayStation 4, we're taking an unprecedented step. For system memory, we're using GDDR5, the type of memory typically reserved for uh, top-of-the-line, high-end graphics cards. This gives us 176 gigabytes per second of bandwidth and provides a further boost to the GPU performance. Now, earlier I said we were using a highly enhanced PC GPU. Principally, we've modified the GPU to make compute easier, which is to say we've made it practical to use the GPU as a general-purpose computational device. This next live demo is a million object physics simulation from Havoc. This is primarily running on the GPU, not the CPU. Tasks that can fully occupy the CPU cores will be achievable using just a fraction of the PlayStation 4 GPU. Overall, our goal has been 
to architect the system so as to support a breadth of experiences. I'm really looking forward to seeing how the development community will choose to use this tool that we've provided for them. Truth is, um, I'm making a game too. In my case, I'm focusing on that joy of play I remember so well from the early PlayStation days. So here's a quick look at the title I'm directing. War has come to our peaceful land. We must send our best to neutralize this threat. A veteran explorer, military might. Um, yes, Doctor. I would like to make a small addition to the team. Behold my greatest creation, Mac. Just go slow, little buddy. You'll be fine. He looks a little delicate to me. Knack is capable of explosive growth. He will be invaluable in the fight against the goblins. Knack, you're no human. Why do you work for them? Victor's up to something. The next step of human evolution begins now. The world is about to change, and he'll be the one who changed it. I can't tell you how nice it is to finally be able to show that in public. So with the major system components, CPU, GPU, hard drive, um, memory, controller in place, the next design task for our team was to create the larger user experience that would surround the games. And we chose five key principles as the basis for this experience. Simple, immediate, social, integrated, and personalized. Now, these are just words, but concepts such as simplicity were extremely helpful in crafting the overall system architecture. Games continue to evolve, some becoming very complex indeed, and the processing power of the system is an exponential leap over its predecessors. But at the same time, we wanted the, the platform itself to be consumer-oriented, with a premium placed on functionality and ease of use. For us, simplicity meant that powerful functionality needed to be just a button press away. Speed of response is also vital. Immediacy is no longer an ambition when creating system UI. It's an expectation with players. So on PlayStation 4, we've put together a feature set assisted in many ways by custom hardware that radically reduces the lag time between consumers and their content. For one, the hardware supports uh, suspending and resuming of play sessions. Just hit the power button, and the system enters a low power state with the play session preserved in RAM. The minutes that it takes today to boot a console and load a saved game will be a thing of the past. On PS4, you'll just hit that power button again and promptly be back playing the game at the exact spot you left off. PlayStation 4 also has a secondary custom chip that manages uploads and downloads. As a result, it's possible to download or update games in the background or even with the main power off. And we're taking this one step further on PlayStation 4, digital titles are playable even as they are being downloaded. When you purchase a title, you download just a fraction of the data and begin playing. The rest of the data is downloaded in the background as you continue to play the game. Our next key principle is social. There's no doubt that play is no longer an isolated pastime. Social play is so important to PlayStation 4 that we've added in hardware to support it in the form of dedicated, always-on, video compression and decompression systems. 
Now, to illustrate the next few points, I'm going to show you various aspects of the PS4 user interface, which is a complete redesign over what we have today on PlayStation 3. Part of what this dedicated video compression and decompression hardware does is it enables seamless uploadings of recordings of gameplay. Just hit the share button on the controller, scan through the last few minutes of gameplay, pick a portion, tag it, and return to your game. The, uh, the video will upload as you continue playing. Our goal is to make the sharing of video as popular in the PlayStation 4 generation as the sharing of screenshots is today. And the same hardware enhances visibility of gameplay. You can browse uh, live game video of what your friends are doing at that exact moment or spectate the gameplay of a famous person within your gaming universe. You can even see that your friend is in trouble and reach out through the network to take over the controller and assist them through some difficult portion of the game. And on PlayStation 4, we are transitioning to a friends network based on real-world friends. We'll keep around the, the alias and the icon used in today's multiplayer matches. These are great to have when anonymity is important. But most of the new social dimension to PlayStation 4 will be interacting with friends using real names and profile pictures, most likely seeded from your existing social network. And this social network isn't visible only from within the console UI. PlayStation 4 is designed to be a highly integrated platform, seamlessly interconnected across the network to the full PlayStation ecosystem, as well as to key third-party devices and services. Applications on smartphones and tablets, as well as uh, net uh, web platforms and Vita, will allow PlayStation 4 conversations to be carried far beyond the living room. You can use your smartphone to browse game video of possible opponents in your favorite fighting game and challenge them to matches. Companion applications on PlayStation Vita or your tablet will add another dimension to the experience and allow you to keep in touch with the evolving world of your game regardless of your location. And our final ambition with PlayStation 4 is personalization. The concept that the system can get to know you and bring you closer to the games and other experiences that you're seeking. Personalization is a key design principle of the PlayStation 4 interface. You're just a button press away from the latest news about your game titles or uh, interactions with your friends. But as the system learns your, your likes and dislikes, we can take this a step further. You'll discover content preloaded and ready to go on your console by your favorite uh, creator or in your favorite genre. Our long-term vision is to reduce download times of digital titles to zero. If we know enough about you to predict the next game you'll purchase, then that game can be loaded and ready to go before you even click the Buy button. So in conclusion, an informed system architecture was fundamental to the creation of PlayStation 4. It is and always has been our goal to deliver play that is deeply satisfying. And in order to do that, we knew we would need to design to the dreams and ambitions of the developers who create the content that game players crave. And we knew that these game players would expect uh, ease of access, simplicity, and control over the content and their experiences, and that a successful new platform would need to not only meet, but also exceed their expectations. We've therefore taken a deeply consumer-focused and developer-centric approach to the design of the PlayStation 4, resulting in gaming experiences that evolve and ensuring that PlayStation continues to offer the best place to play. As a developer and creator, and certainly as a gamer, I'm thrilled about the vast potential of the PS4 to empower new and even more compelling game experiences. And that's the end of my section of today's presentation. Thank you very much for your time. So I'd like to introduce the next speaker, Dave Perry. Uh, you probably know him as the uh, uh, co-founder and CEO of Gaikai, a pioneering company in uh, cloud gaming that Sony Entertainment uh, purchased last year. For me, though, it's, it's a bit different. Um, Dave's one of my personal heroes, a charismatic game designer with a string of hits, including Aladdin and Earthworm Jim that I've spent far too much of my time playing over the years. Please join me in welcoming David Perry, CEO of GuyCon.
Hey, thanks, Mark. It's truly an honor to be here with everyone in the room and the millions watching um, live around the world. I can't tell you how excited the Gaikai team and I are to be working on the PlayStation 4 platform. They're actually back at our office watching live um, through the internet right now, so hi, everyone. As Mark mentioned, I've proudly spent nearly all of my life playing and creating video games. We all remember powering up our first PlayStation and the adrenaline rush that followed. It wasn't just a piece of hardware that gave us the goosebumps. It was knowing that the PlayStation would be delivering new experiences that pushed the gaming forward into completely new territories. And that's precisely what we're doing with PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation Network, integrated with our Gaikai technology. PlayStation 4 is an incredible platform, and it's imperative that the PlayStation Network delivers a connected experience that is equally incredible and delivers on the vision of the PlayStation 4. With the network, you'll fight together, you'll become champions together, and you'll conquer the world together. The gamer is at the center of the PlayStation Network, so every decision that we're making for the network is scrutinized to ensure that it delivers on what gamers want most out of their entertainment experiences. What we're creating is the fastest, most powerful network for gaming in the world. The PlayStation Network will get to know you by understanding your personal preferences and the preferences of your community, and turns this knowledge into useful information that will help to enhance future gameplay. So like when your friends purchase a new game, you'll know immediately so you can join into the action. And with the Gaikai Cloud technology, our goal is to make free exploration possible for virtually any PlayStation 4 game in the PlayStation Store. So imagine you're in the store, you're checking out the latest titles, and, and you see something that catches your eye. No problem. You can simply press the X button to hop in and start playing the game. Now, in the past, not all games were available, and the ones that were had to be kind of the light version, where they'd been edited down so that they could be downloaded reasonably quickly. With Gaikai in the PlayStation Store, you'll be able to instantly experience anything that you want. I've always liked that concept of try it for free, share it if you like it, and pay only for the games that you fall in love with. So now we're changing the rules when it comes to social gaming. By putting social at the core of PlayStation 4 experiences, we can layer in new features meaningful to gamers. We've partnered with some of the biggest and most influential social networks in the world, including Facebook and Ustream, to bring gamers' friends into games like never before. Social networks such as Facebook are obviously critical to how we stay in touch with our friends and current events around the world. But they don't know your PlayStation gaming history and, pre and all your preferences, nor those of your friends. They don't know if you're a journey expert or if you've collected up every platinum in, in the Uncharted series. So by combining the PlayStation 4, the PlayStation Network, and these social platforms, our vision is to create the first social gaming network with meaning. It's, and this network will be dedicated, just to be clear, to games. So as you know, spectating has become very popular in our industry because it lets gamers learn tricks and tips from the best players in the world. When players find something they love, it's our job at PlayStation to make that even better. So we've asked ourselves, how could we improve the spectating experience? First, what we're using is that share button on the PlayStation 4 controller. With that one button, you can broadcast from your game live, 100% real time, um, to, to your friends. It's an incredible innovation and something that has never been possible on console before. And we could have stopped there, but we kept pushing. So we're making it so that your friends can actually look over your shoulder virtually and interact with you while you're playing. And if you allow them, your friends can also post comments to your screen. You can solicit support from them, or you can just trash talk with them, and you can even be inside a different game. But wouldn't it be cool if you were stuck in a difficult level, like you just can't work out how to get through that door? You could ask a friend on the internet who's finished the game to take over your controller and assist. We're, we're building this capability into the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation Network so that your circle of PSN friends will become that much more important. And finally, we're helping fuel the imagination of our developers by giving them new spectating tools. Now imagine a developer using these tools if they identify a gaming expert, they can give them director level status so they can manipulate levels to assist you during your gameplay. Developers can insert command buttons for certain levels 
where friends can drop in special items for you, such as giving you a health potion when you're in critical condition. We've also partnered with Ustream to give gamers multicasting capabilities. And that means you can schedule a set time and broadcast your gameplay live to, to anyone that you want to invite. In summary, the base hardware architecture for PlayStation Network was designed to facilitate and integrate social aspects throughout all phases of the gaming experience. The PlayStation Network wraps you in your favorite content wherever you are, across the PS4, the PS3, the PS Vita, smartphones, and tablets. And we're going to give developers a simple, elegant solution for enhancing their PS4 games on second screens. A key feature enabled by second screens is remote play. Now, we believe so much in remote play that it's been built into the architecture of the PlayStation 4. So how are we unlocking remote play's potential with this next generation? The answer is PlayStation Vita. PS Vita is the ultimate companion device for PS4, enabling gamers to put their games from their beautiful HD TVs right onto their PS Vita's beautiful 5-inch OLED display. For example, say you're in the middle of an epic battle on PS4, but your kids have just taken over the living room. What do you do? Well, it's easy. You just use remote play to transfer the game over to your, to your PS Vita. Now, as you saw, Mark is working on this game, Knack, on the PS4. So we brought a surprise for him today. By using remote play, he can now also play his game instantly on the PS Vita. So what do you think, Mark? I think it looks great. Uh, so this is my PlayStation 4 title, Knack, running in remote play on Vita. And the work's really well distributed between the uh, two consoles. We're using the full graphical capabilities of the PlayStation 4. And on Vita, we're taking advantage of the beautiful 5-inch OLED, as well as the sophisticated mobile controls. I was expecting you to say, cool. <laughs> so OK, spoken like a true system architect. Um, our long-term goal for, uh, is to make every PlayStation 4 title playable on the PS Vita. I mean, if you think about that, even the demos that you're seeing today, some of the most incredible, we have some incredible things to show you. If you can imagine, we can make those games instantly playable on the PS Vita as well. So to make remote play between the PS4 and the PS Vita feel good, we've dramatically reduced transmission times so the gameplay is snappy and immediate. We've accomplished this by integrating some of the Gaikai technology into the PS4 system architecture that essentially turns it into a game server and the PS Vita becomes a client with remarkably fast connection speeds. Of course, the PlayStation Network and the PS4 will provide access to a vast array of other forms of entertainment beyond gaming. PlayStation gamers love all forms of entertainment, including watching movies, watching TV shows, listening to music. So the PlayStation Network will have services including Sony's own Video Unlimited and Music Unlimited. And we're working with leading services like Netflix, Amazon Instant Video, and other media services to have them on the platform. We'll be announcing more specifics on this later in the year. Now, I've already mentioned a couple of ways that Gaikai's cloud technology and PlayStation Network will enhance the player's experiences. But PlayStation Network and the cloud can present additional value to PlayStation gamers. For example, over the past six years, PlayStation 3 has built an incredible catalog of titles that is unmatched in the industry. Although PS3 titles aren't natively supported on the PS4, we're exploring some very unique opportunities enabled by cloud technology with the long-term vision of making PS3 games ubiquitous on any device. The technology is so advanced that someday we could easily put PS1, PS2, PS3, and the PS Mobile games on any device, including the PlayStation 4. This would fundamentally change the concept of game longevity. Imagine having access to all the old games you love and the ability to get them up and running in seconds wherever you are on whatever device you have near you. Everything everywhere is the challenge that PlayStation has put before our teams. That's the vision of the PlayStation Cloud service, and it's going to require us to build the fastest global network ever made. Now, Gaikai won a Guinness World Record for our prototype network, but now I'm happy to announce that the project has been fully greenlit by Sony. So this is not an investment into advanced technology and infrastructure. This is an investment into the millions of loyal PlayStation gamers across the world who would love to have all the past, present, and future games at their fingertips. 
We'll be rolling out PlayStation's cloud services in phases, so we can't reveal all the possibilities here today, but you can be certain that it and the PlayStation 4 will change the way that we play. Now, I've described the vision and the strategy behind PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation Network. Let's hear how some of the world's most accomplished developers are using it as their virtual platform to turn their creative dreams into reality. Thank you. You know, our industry the past 10 years has seen so many trends come and go. You know, there's been, you know, at times people are, you have to do social, you have to be casual, you have to do hardcore, you have to do this, you have to do that. But as much as it's been changing, all of those different trends have been supporting each other. What I love about this console is that I think it's the first time that these trends are going to really be brought together. This is where the promise of what we can do is bigger than just one genre. This time, uh, Sony came around to us and they came to our office and they said, here's what we're thinking, what are you guys thinking? What have you been held back by and what would you do if you didn't have any technical limitations? That they gave us the possibility to provide feedback and, and to adapt based on the feedback they received from developers was for me a very important message. All these developers had a hand in actually helping form what the PlayStation 4 would eventually turn out to be. We took all that into consideration to create the system that just works. When we think about the word simple, we've chosen to interpret that with a comparable word, elegance. And to us that means this balance between how complex the simulation or the options or the interfaces are with how deep the experience you can get from it. The more elegant a design is, then the more simple and easy it is to get incredible depth. Where you can have a deeper experience that's still not really complicated, but it's much richer and much more immersive. Everyone has, to some degree, some instinct of craft. They want to make something their own. They want to make it a representation of themselves to other people who know them. Through personalization, there can be a relationship between the kind of content that I'm interested in and how the options are presented to me. So this system actually is very much aware of the player and what's going on in the room at any given point. So, for example, when I go to the PlayStation Store, right now I see advertisements and commercials for a lot of games that I'm frankly not interested in. Having a good way to present you the games that you're interested in is very important for us. If we want everyone to be engaged in gaming and, and love it and understand it, we just got to make it easy for everyone to get into that and not waste everyone's time. That doesn't involve three minutes of boot up and disc shuffling and sort of all of these things that are just like a nuisance between the impulse to play a game. So immediacy becomes an important goal. I want to make the decision to experience something or to access something, and I want it right now. There isn't any more waiting time. There isn't any more startup. I literally walk in, pick up the controller, hit the start button, it just goes. It's a huge win for gamers. You're able to download the first bit of a game and start playing it before the next 20 gigs download. One button press away, and you get what you want. Historically, console games have, have been very much like lived in a tower. You go to your living room, you have that experience there, and that's where it happens. And then like you leave your living room and then you have the rest of your life. Looking ahead, integrated gaming experiences will follow you everywhere that you go. The entire world has changed in the way you can interact with many devices wherever you are at any time of day. So there'll be some window into that entertainment experience that's accessible through your phone or your PC or a portable gaming device. The many different devices that you use are seamlessly integrated to create your PS4 experience very seamless. There was a time when the shared experience meant that your friend sat next to you on the couch. Now that we can basically project that across the globe. Offering them opportunities to interact with each other you know, while they're playing the game, but also outside of the game. The new big feature that we've, we have on this controller is the appearance of the share button. The share button allows you to record any gameplay uh, and create a video or a screenshot and share it instantly. Whenever they want to share an uh, epic moment, they can just press that button. Before we had to make a video, edit the video, upload the video, and now we're going to make this so easy for people to just like press the share button and off it goes. It's going to bring opportunities to engage players with the game and with each other um, like we've never done before. One of the neat things about next generation hardware is there's always kind of this 
this mystery. What is the, the actual ceiling of this thing? What is the potential? How far are we going to be able to push it? The possibilities have just blown open in, in a way that in previous generations it never had. This is what PlayStation is about. It's about innovation and it's about new ideas. PlayStation 4 というのは、まあ、非常にプレーンなシステムですから、まあ、白がキャンバスみたいなもので、えー、すごくクリエイターにと,とってこう腕の振るいようがあるんですね。あの全ては、えー、クリエイターが何を、えー、そのキャンバスに書き込むか、えー、が全てなんですね。Because at the end of the day, everybody does like that. Everybody does want to see new, amazing things. For me, the three words that would recap would be immersive, magical, simplicity, ultimate play. The game entertainment machine. It's coming soon. It's a connected world. It's the PlayStation. Ladies and gentlemen, from Worldwide Studios, please welcome Michael Denny. Thank you. So, as you've heard from Mark and Dave, and as you've just seen in the video, there are a lot of very happy game developers out there right now, which is fantastic. Because the future of PlayStation is about great games, inspiring new experiences from the imaginations of the world's best creators. In the past, creators' ambitions have often been constrained by the limitations of technology. PlayStation 4 will bring a new synergy between hardware, software, and the fastest, most powerful gaming network in the world, unlocking a new canvas for creativity. From the outset, our game creators have been given the opportunity to collaborate. With our hardware and system software engineers to help shape PlayStation 4's unique feature set. So, with this powerful synergy, deeper, more connected experiences and a newer emotional state of play are made possible. At Worldwide Studios, we are privileged to work with the world's best development teams. And whether working on new IP or reinventing existing franchises, PlayStation 4 has ignited their creativity. To build exclusive new experiences that until now they could only have dreamt of. So, I guess what a lot of you have been waiting for, let's take an early look at some of their work. Please welcome on stage the managing director and co founder of Guerrilla Games, Herman Hulse. Thank you. In the near future, Mankind has colonized planets in search of resources. However, there is a conflict between two factions the people of Helgan and the people of Vector. This conflict is about much more than just resources. The Helgast are fighting for their right to exist, while the Vectans want to protect their way of life. The Helgast have evolved and claimed genetic superiority. They are brutal and relentless in pursuit of their so called justice. Against the Vectans. This war devastates planets. The conflict draws parallels to Cold War Berlin, with two factions living side by side, divided by a vast wall. This is a story about the loss of home, the search for a new home, and the lengths to which people go to defend it. This is Killzone Shadowfall. Traffic passing through here today. More than usual. They're drafting in units from all over. Just the waiting around them messes with your head. 
Guess now you're here, things start moving, huh? Nobody gets through without... Back up! Back up! Let him through! Everyone, this way, sir. Side. Sorry, sir, just a formality. Okay, clear. Please proceed.
Good evening, everyone. I'm Matt Southern from Evolution Studios, and we're making the game we've always wanted to make. It's called Drive Club, and it's all about team-based racing. I've waited so long to be able to tell you about it. It's existed as a concept at the studio for 10 years. We trademarked the name Drive Club nine years ago. You can check it online. At its heart, it's always been a very simple concept about driving the very best cars in the world in the greatest locations in the world, but crucially, doing it together. And we've literally waited for the technology to be available to deliver our vision. We've visited the greatest car companies there are to share this vision for next-gen team racing. And they love that Drive Club isn't just about cars and locations, not even just about winning races, but about people, about collaborative gameplay with friends in teams. Next generation no longer just means more powerful hardware. We're the next generation of gamer. We want to play great looking games like this, but in new ways that fit our permanently connected social lives. And to us, that means driving in a team. Drive Club is a game to play in real clubs, asynchronously and in real time, against other clubs all around the world. The gameplay isn't specifically about races, it's about challenges and rewards you for playing in groups even if you aren't top of the leaderboard, much like the best squad-based first-person shooters do. I can also fire up the Drive Club app on my phone or tablet, pick a race type, pick the cars, pick any time of day, in any weather, at any time of the year, set a time, and then send that challenge all around the world. Then I can watch the drama unfold as hundreds of players and clubs try to become the best at my challenge. We're talking 24-7, untethered access to your club, no matter where you are, home or away. Plus, whether it's a short team drag race or a weekend-long thousand-player tournament with hundreds of teams, every section of every track is packed with challenges. First-person games are also great at transporting you and your friends fully into their worlds. And we're using first-person perspective to make sure you and your mates feel exactly how you should when you own a car like this. We're recreating them with obsessive love. These are two of the fastest production cars in the world, the Hennessy Venom GT and the Koenigsegg Agera R. And they're as close as you'll get to the real thing in terms of detail and accuracy, with totally correct material parameters painstakingly measured from the real thing using our custom-built photometric apparatus. We've gone borderline insane with real-world details and subtleties. We've modeled the direction of each microscopic metallic flake of paint in multiple layers. We've emulated the effect of each individual thread in the weave of the carbon fiber so the pattern alters realistically with the lighting angle. The lights themselves are fully modeled using multiple layers of reflectors and lenses that refract the real bulbs underneath. And we've modeled those rainbow patterns you get when you wax the plastic headlamp covers. Even the suede and carpet have a fiber direction map, causing them to reflect light differently when they've been brushed or touched. In fact, Let's climb into a car now. This isn't cockpit view. This is true first-person racing. The exquisite feeling of opening the door, breathing in the experience, strapping yourself in, and firing up a 1,200 brake horsepower engine. Ladies and gentlemen, it's such a thrill for a studio to be asked to help define new PlayStation technology so that we can finally bring our vision for team-based racing to life. That's just a brief glimpse of Drive Club. We can't wait to show you more. Thank you.
In 1999, I took part in a political rally and got tear gassed by the cops. Now, up until then, I'd always thought the police were there to protect me, to protect the people that I cared about. But on that day, they didn't. We all want to feel safe, right? But it is hard to put your finger on what that sense of security is worth. However, it is easy to say what it costs. Right now, there are 4.2 million security cameras distributed all around Great Britain. That is one camera for every 14 citizens. In 2011, the U.S. government seized the personal cell phone records of 1.3 million of its citizens. There are 1,200 of us in here today. Four of us have been monitored. And two years ago, American travelers spent a combined 75,000 years waiting in airport security. You add that all up, that is 1,000 lifetimes lost in line in just one year. Our security comes at a high price, our freedom. Now, picture how things would change, how the world would react if a handful of people suddenly developed superhuman abilities, capable of unleashing incredible carnage without ever pulling a trigger or lighting a fuse. These people would be living, breathing weapons that could pass through any metal detector or x-ray scanner or even a strip search, completely undetectable. We already live in a culture of fear. Picture how things would change. How much control would any of us have over our own lives? And which of us would have the courage to fight to get our freedoms back? I'm Nate Fox, here to introduce to you Sucker Punch's latest game, exclusive for the PlayStation 4. Status. G6 clear. G7 status. H1 status. What the hell? What was that? I, I, I don't know. B2 status. What should we do? B2 repeat status. On me. Keep your eyes peeled. Go. Up there! We got B2. I want him alive. Thanks, Nate, and I'm pretty sure he's just won the backstage suite for the coolest game introduction of the night there. And thanks to all the guys for introducing three already amazing looking games that not only look fantastic, but allow a depth of gameplay that will take our players to a new level of immersion. PlayStation has always been proud to offer the best game, gameplay experiences. Now, often that means deeper and more intense versions of experiences that we know we already love. But sometimes best can mean things that are surprising, things that don't always fit, things that can help us pioneer new ways to play and embrace the unexpected. PlayStation will always be a leader in encouraging creators to push the boundaries. 
from supporting smaller indies with their highly innovative and sometimes left field ideas to supporting more established teams in their quest to take creative risks, risks that other publishers simply won't take. In the next few minutes, we would like to take you on an adventure into the imaginations of three amazing creators who continue to inspire us with their unique visions. The first comes from one of the world's most acclaimed independent developers. PlayStation remains steadfast in our support for the indie development community. By offering self-publishing on PlayStation Network, we'll continue to provide the most open console to enable smaller developers to easily bring their breakthrough titles to PlayStation gamers. So please join me in welcoming on stage the creator of the captivating and critically acclaimed Braid to introduce his team's latest creation that will debut on PlayStation 4, Jonathan Blow. Hey, I really don't know what I'm gonna do to follow up after all those explosions, but uh, we'll see what happens, I guess. Anyway, due to the success of Braid, we've managed to found a new small development studio, and we've been working on our new game, which is called The Witness, for three and a half years now. It's a game where you explore a mysterious abandoned island and solve the puzzles that you find there. But at its heart, at its core, it's a game about epiphany, that instantaneous transition of the mind that takes you from confusion to understanding. You know, one minute your situation seems impossible. You have no idea what the solution to your problem would even look like. And then the next minute you see everything. It's all very simple and clear. And you wonder how you couldn't have seen this solution before. You know, a lot of games, um, a lot of games have these kind of little aha moments in them. But in The Witness, we take this aha substance and distill it into a concentrated form. And in doing so, we make design decisions the opposite way that most games would. The Witness takes place in an open world, so you can go wherever you want to at any time. But whereas most games in open worlds try to make their worlds as big as possible, so you'll be uh, impressed by the sheer scale of the endeavor, in The Witness, we're trying to make the world as compact as possible, so that you have a very dense experience that makes the best use of your time. Wherever you're standing in this open world, there are three or four different destinations with completely different themes within 20 seconds of walking from where you are. New interesting things around every corner, and everything in the world is carefully placed, and everything is where it is for a reason. A lot of games try to pad their playtime so that they seem long, but in this game, we work very, very hard to cut anything that's redundant. There's no filler. Now, it's a puzzle game, but the puzzles aren't just arbitrary. They don't exist just to be puzzles for you to solve. Every puzzle has an idea inside it. And on the design side, we work very, very hard to communicate in a nonverbal way the essence of each idea. Now, even with this focus on compactness, we've managed to put together a game with 25 hours of gameplay of unique puzzles, everyone bringing you something different. And in the release window, PlayStation 4 will be the only console that The Witness is on. Now, it's a game that happens really all in your mind, much more so than on the screen anyway. But nevertheless, tonight we've put together our first official trailer, which I'll show you now. Let's roll the clip. Radically customized technology can interfere.
Thanks, Jonathan. Wonderful stuff. And how about that? What other, what other event would show you a game like the visceral and action-packed kill zone, followed by the mesmerizing and thought-provoking witness? And speaking of kill zone, at the end of the playthrough you saw earlier, Stephen hit the new share button and uploaded it directly to the kill zone Facebook page. So as soon as we're done here, please go check it out. OK, so what follows now are not game presentations, but a glimpse of the future, sure to challenge your current vision of gaming. Two of our wonderfully talented creators will give us an early glimpse into their concepting process and demonstrate what is possible when you combine PlayStation 4 with unbridled creativity. So first up, please welcome, from the award-winning Quantic Dream, David Cage. When people ask me, what is the feature you want the most on future hardware platforms? My answer is always the same, emotion. Getting the player emotionally involved is the holy grail of all game creators. We all try to trigger intense, subtle, and diverse emotions. We try to make players forget that this is just a program animating pixels on the screen. We don't want them just to watch something. We want them to leave it and suspend their disbelief, experiencing that magic moment where they live in a different reality. Emotion is something complex and challenging to capture. It's conveyed by graphics, animation, sound, cinematography, dialogue, of course, gameplay. In a medium like ours, technology is very important. It is what we rely on to get the player emotionally involved. If you look in the past, some films were highly emotional while being silent and in black and white. But they were limited in their expression to simpler stories that had to be told under heavy technical constraints. Actors had to exaggerate their moves to convey their emotions. Cameras could hardly move. And lighting, as well as photography, were barely concepts at the time. Cinema really became what it is today when technology evolved enough to let movie directors and actors create the subtle emotions they wanted on screen. Eventually, they developed sound, color, lighting, and higher resolution formats. And suddenly, the audience could see in the eyes of the actors when they were lying or when they were about to cry. Pantomimes were not necessary anymore because the most subtle nuances of emotions could be seen on screen. With the PlayStation 4, games have now finally reached that stage. In 1999, Quantic Dream's first game, Omicron, featured characters with 350 polygons. Indigo Prophecy's main characters were around 1,500 polys. Heavy Rain's character were about 15,000. Chara at 20,000. This year, Jody Holmes and Beyond will be about 30,000 polygons. On PlayStation 4, this is what you can get. Quantic Dream has developed a completely new engine. What you see is running in real-time 3D on a PlayStation 4. It is our first attempt at using advanced skin shaders with translucency, realistic eyes shaders, volumetric lights, 3D depth of field, and many, many other features that were up until today reserved to CG films. This is the quality that we will get in our future games. And we know we can go even further. But more important than these technical features, we, we start to reach a point where you can see very subtle emotions on the face of a character, where you can feel his emotions just looking at his face, where you can see his soul just looking into his eyes. When you look at this old man, you can imagine who he is, what he thinks, what happened to him, without him saying a word. With the PlayStation 4, game creators can now forget about the technology limitations and simply focus on inventing experiences never seen before. We can concentrate on what amazing stories we want to tell and what incredible worlds we want to create. We can take you to places you have never been before and make you feel emotions that you have never felt in real life without having to wonder if we will have the horsepower to do so. We are now only limited by our imagination. 
Thank you. Wow, David, please can I have a copy of that skin shader? But I mean, seriously, it's just amazing to be able to get that emotion in the eyes. It's really hard. So hello, I'm Alex Evans from Media Molecule. And um, Michael asked us to just give a little insight into our creative process over the last few years at our studio. And you know, when we first heard about the PlayStation 4, we began thinking, what can we do to turn creative gaming and take it to the next level. Because that's what Media Molecule was founded to do. It was to use this amazing device to bring the creativity of every PlayStation user to the fore. And creativity takes many forms these days, whether it's taking a picture, cosplaying as Kratos, or 3D printing a customized character. It's easier than ever to show off your skills. And with the internet, you can reach millions of people. So creation is everywhere, but it can feel kind of fractured and complicated. And so we thought, how can we cut through all the crap? And we realized there's a simple way of thinking about all of this. What we wanted to do was let you record your dreams. Think about that for a second. Record your dreams. You see, the PlayStation 4 for us at Media Molecule should be the creative console. It's the place you go to be inspired. It's the place you go to experience other people's dreams or to make your own. It's the place you go to create. And the only question for us was how. When we looked at how people create digitally, especially in 3D, things just haven't changed in the last five or 10 years. As a graphics programmer, vertices, textures, UV mapping, they've been the bane of my life and the artists I work with for many years. I call it the tyranny of the polygon. And so we asked ourselves, how could PlayStation 4 change this? How could the insane power per dollar that only a next-gen console deliver how can we sweep away the techie mess? How can we redefine digital making and overcome the tyranny of the polygon? So we've done two years of research into this, from motion capture to stereo cameras to advanced user interfaces, touch interfaces. Basically, we tried everything. And it got more and more complicated, more and more space age. It just did not feel like recording dreams at all. And then we discovered that the single most powerful, accurate, and precise tool for 3D creation was right under our noses. It was the Move Controller. Now, finally, at last, after a troubled relationship, we've completely fallen in love with this thing. Dear Move Controller, I'm sorry. It's taken us so long to realize this, but we're going to marry you with the power of the PlayStation 4. We are going to revolutionize making. You're great. So one of the first things we built with this was a sculpting tool. And we've been using it for a while now. Once we stopped thinking in terms of memory budgets, schedules, pixels, we forgot about the technology, and we just started doodling, just sketching, put that at the heart of our creative process. A really lovely thing happened. We started having real fun making, collaborating, sketching, remaking. It doesn't matter where you start out, because you can take a left turn at any time that inspiration strikes and go somewhere even cooler. It's a free-form creative journey that I think of a little bit like cloud watching except that you can reach in at any time and change and shape it to whatever's in your head. Behind me, you can see a time lapse of one of our sculpts playing back literally as it was made, because we record every single move that you make. And because it's such a quick and freeform thing, before we knew it at Media Molecule, we had made hundreds of these things. Imagine this multiplied from our tiny staff to the thousands and millions of brilliant PlayStation users online. Every single one of these was made entirely with the Move Controller. And it's a kind of performance. You're able to put down your ideas as fast as you can think of them. It's this combination of the PlayStation 4's power with the Move's unique accuracy, which allows us to ditch all of the 2D fiddly camera controls and nasty user interface. It makes 3D sculpting easy for beginners and deep for advanced creators. And if you're like me and haven't quite mastered sculpture yet, then we're going to allow you to use the creativity of all of these people to collage and create ever larger sets, game levels, stories, with the really the simplest possible interface. You just hold your controller and click to assemble your dream. Of course, this isn't just about sculpture and collage. With, with PlayStation 4, with the creative console, we wanted to change making in every way, whether it's music, gaming, or storytelling. And the point is, it's fast to create. What you're about to see was recorded live in one take it's someone's dream 
brought to life with PlayStation 4. How do you follow that? <laughs> Thanks very much, Alex. Although we've only shown glimpses of these new exclusive titles and some creative explorations being developed for PlayStation 4, I think you'll agree that our Worldwide Studios team and the indie community is pushing the boundaries into how games look, feel, and interact. Of course, the development teams that comprise Worldwide Studios aren't the only ones focusing their efforts on PlayStation 4. We have long-standing relationships going back to the original PlayStation with some of the most iconic and influential developers in the world. And I'm proud to announce that virtually every major third-party partner across North America, Europe, Japan, and Asia will support PlayStation 4. Today, we'll be sharing with you some amazing new titles, but we're just scratching the surface of the full roster that we'll show throughout the year. To help demonstrate this point, Please join me in welcoming our first guest, Yoshinori Ono from Capcom. Hi everyone. Do you want to stretch? All right. <laughs> so I'm not uh, talking about Street Fighter today. <laughs> So, good morning, uh, good, no, good, good, good evening, <laughs> everyone. So, and good morning, those in, in Japan. I have really been looking forward to tonight's uh, presentation. You have no idea how badly I wanted to tweet about it, but I preserved. <laughs> it feels good to finally be able to talk about this stuff. I hope you are like, eager to listen as well. This event is, is being streamed to Japan as we speak. So we will be conducting this presentation in both Japanese and English. Japanese Capcom's technology and the games themselves have changed a great deal over the years, keeping pace with PlayStation's evolving technology and business style. PlayStation 1 の時代、我々は 2D アニメーションからバイオハザードというタイトルで 3D に大きく変革のテクノロジーをしてきました。The technology of the original PlayStation allowed us to move beyond the 2D sprites to which we'd grown accustomed and break new ground with IPs such as Resident Evil. PlayStation 2の時代、DVD ROM という新しいビジネススタイル、そしてエモーションエンジンという新しいグラフィックエンジンを我々手に入れて、新しい IP、鬼武者シリーズとデビルメイクライを作り出してきました
The DVD-ROM technology in the Emotion Engine, brought to us by the PlayStation 2, allowed us to create visually stunning titles that took advantage of newly developed graphical engines. Titles such as the Onimusha series and Devil May Cry would not have been possible without the technology that the PS2 brought to the table. The PSP allowed us, for the first time, to take our PlayStation experience out of the living room and into the world, using communication technology to bring such experiences like the Monster Hunter series to life. The most gorgeous 2D art the Street Fighter series could muster upon its rebirth. The progression and evolution of the Resident Evil series and the utter fear that it instills, all this immersion, all these fantastic effects, we owe it to the PlayStation 3 format. And now here we are, with the announcement of the PlayStation 4, we are proud to help usher in a new era of entertainment. We've been hard at work developing a new engine suited to the PlayStation 4 and its power, the next evolutionary step from our MT Framework engine. PlayStation 4. We continue to refine this engine to ensure that it takes advantage of the incredible technology, power, and business style that the PlayStation 4 embodies. This new engine, codenamed Panto Ray, by taking advantage of the current technology and providing the tools necessary to harness it will allow us to take game design in entirely new directions. I'd like to show you a little something that represents a new IP running on the PlayStation 4 using the Pantaray engine. So as we speak, Deep Down is being developed concurrently with the Pantaray engine. So we're hoping that the power and technology behind the PlayStation 4 will bring us all sorts of brand new experiences. Thank you very much for listening to our presentation. Thank you.
Thanks very much, Onosan. Domo. Arigato gozaimashita. Footage looks remarkable and brand new IP. We're really excited by what Capcom has in the works for PlayStation 4, and we'll be sharing more later this year. Square Enix is another major partner developing for PlayStation 4. As you know, our relationship with Square Enix dates back 16 years to when Final Fantasy VII appeared on the original PlayStation. Since then, our partnership has fostered some of the most innovative gameplay and rich cinematics and storylines that gamers fell in love with. Please join me in welcoming to the stage Yoshihisa Hashimoto from Square Enix to tell you more about their support for PlayStation 4. Hi everyone, good evening. My name is Yoshisa Hashimoto. I'm the Chief Technology Officer of Square Enix Japan. It's a great pleasure to be present at the announcement of the PlayStation 4. This is a historical event for the game industry. And I'm truly honored to be allowed to give a demonstration in front of you all. Today's demo isn't a game, but rather a real-time cinematic demo running on PlayStation 4. This cinematic was created using Lumina Studio, Square Enix state-of-the-art game engine. I believe it will give you a taste of the game experiences that will become possible with the next-gen capabilities of the PlayStation 4. Without further ado, please enjoy.
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is the level of quality that Square Enix is targeting for our next generation titles. The PlayStation 4 is a multifunctional, incredibly powerful gaming platform. Its CPU and GPU processing power are extremely high. And it has massive amount of memory and even has wonderful social features. And the development environment is excellent flexible, and super easy to use. In short, it's a game developer's dream. Thanks to the PlayStation 4, the possibilities of gameplay experiences have been greatly expanded, and players will be enthralled by the new generation of gameplay that will appear on the PlayStation 4. So my part is ending, but we have one other piece of information to share with everyone. I'll give the floor to the other Hashimoto to tell you about it. Well, Mr. Shinji Hashimoto, please take it away. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Shinji Hashimoto. I am the brand director for Final Fantasy at Square Enix. I am not brothers with your sister. Okay, today, I just have one thing to say. On the occasion of this presentation by your sister of the Luminous Engine, and the announcement of the PlayStation 4 from Sony Computer Entertainment. I would, I would also like to announce that we are preparing for development of a Final Fantasy title. Please, please be excited for E3 this year. Thank you so much, thank you so much. See you soon, bye. Thank you, Hashimoto-san. The Luminous Studio demo running on PS4 further demonstrates the system's graphics and computational power. I would now like to welcome a very special partner and a personal friend. Over the years, Ubisoft has become an extension of the PlayStation family and their support for our platforms has produced hit after hit. The Ubisoft team is truly pioneering a lot of next generation gameplay and I'm very excited by what they have to share with you tonight. Please welcome Ubisoft co-founder and CEO, Eve Guillermo. Thank you. At E3 last year, I asked you all a question. Who really controls our cities, our information, and our lives? Thanks to PlayStation 4 and our next-gen titles, Watch Dogs, we have the answer. It will be all of you. Next generation games blur the lines between the real and virtual worlds, more than ever before. Ubisoft development teams have been hard at work with the PlayStation 4 to make gaming experiences that are more connected, more immersive, and more interactive. We are creating games that will be played anywhere any time across many different devices. Games that will bring friends and gaming communities closer together and let you collaborate to achieve amazing things. Games that are tailored to match your interests and can quickly adapt to all your needs. And we are using the PS4's Quantum Leap in power graphics and AI to construct deeper, richer, and more believable games. Players are going to be super excited by the PS4, and this platform will bring millions of new customers. Now, to give you an example of the kind of connected, immersive, and interactive experience, please welcome Jonathan Moran to tell you more about Watch Dogs.
Thank you very much, Ian. Hello, everyone. Finally back on stage to talk about watch dogs. Hyperconnectivity have changed us. It started with computers, mobile devices, and then we all got one of these. Everything about me and the ones I love are on this phone. Now, what's the next step? Smart cities, a system that manages entire cities to solve complex problems. Traffic jams, war against crime, power management. In watchdogs, you're going to control all of it. We've shown this at last year, E3. Everything is connected. But today, I want you all to discover that everyone is connected. I want you all to feel what it's like to control Aiden Pierce and wander around in Chicago, to invade everyone's privacy without them knowing. You're all about to discover that once you can tap into anyone's lives, anything can happen dynamically in front of you. So you're now going to enjoy a full-blown new live demo that will show you that exploring an open world has never been so engaging. So thanks to Nick to perform for you tonight. Enjoy. The heart of America feels like somewhere it must have skipped a beat. People haven't changed, but now everybody's broadcasting. And once you've seen it, all of it, how do you look away? Oh, 
Thanks, Jonathan and Eve. Watch Dogs on PlayStation 4 will be an amazing experience, and we have much more to share with you later this year. There's another partner I'd like to invite on stage tonight to help illustrate the tremendous support we have for PlayStation 4. This iconic developer is known for making some of the most immersive and creative games anywhere. And this is not only the first time they've been on stage for PlayStation, but the first time they've been on stage for any console. It's my pleasure to introduce Senior Vice President of Story and Franchise Development from Blizzard Entertainment, Chris Metzen. Good evening. How are y'all doing? Good, good, good. Many of you are probably wondering why a note school old school PC game developer is kind of crashing the big Sony party tonight. I'm very pleased to share with you all that Blizzard and Sony have entered into a strategic partnership through which we will take over the world. <laughs> oh, if it were that easy. Uh, you know, one of the things that uh, people don't really know about Blizzard is that we actually got our start as a console game development shop. You know, we cut our teeth on making games like uh, Lost Vikings, Rock and Roll Racing, Blackthorn. Thank you. Old school. Uh, you could say that console game development really is just in our blood. We're very, very passionate about it. Uh, and all these years, uh, we've really played on the, the PC side of the street. Uh, we have held a, a, a deep desire uh, to get back into the mix uh, and to bring console players, you know, some of the home-cooked, you know, imagination and adventure that we love to develop. Uh, the trick was always going to be, how? How do we do it? We spent a lot of time thinking about uh, which of our franchises, you know, could translate to console, uh, which, if any, of our game products uh, could make the jump uh, while still maintaining their accessibility, their playability, their ease of use. We feel, we know, in partnership with Sony, that we have our game. So I'm very pleased tonight to announce the game that Blizzard Entertainment will be bringing to the PlayStation 4. Thank you. Diablo 3 will be available for the PlayStation 4 as well as the PlayStation 3. Actually, right now, we have a version running on the PS3. It's, it's amazing. It runs well. It looks great. Uh, we have painstakingly optimized our, our control schemes uh, anywhere from you know, the, the entire user interface of, of the inventory system to player customization, um, even direct control over your player avatar. So, you know, if some of you have played on the PC side, you're not mashing your, your mouse into your desk. 
uh, Diablo 3 has really never been easier to play. Uh, one of the really fun things about this version of the game is we've developed a four-player co-op mode that's full screen. You know, you can kind of sidestep all of the split screen, you know, split screen shenanigans, you know, if one of the group, you know, decides to run back to town, you know, it's just kind of a, a smooth, seamless play. You can play with your three best friends on a couch. It's kind of one of our, our standby lines, you know, one couch to rule them all. Uh, to try and, <laughs> one way or another, translate some of our gameplay experience from perhaps your home office to the living room. So we thought that would be very, very cool. Uh, coming up, uh, I think uh, in the coming months, we're going to formally debut the game. We're going to have some video. We're going to have playable demos of the thing. We're going to answer all of your questions, I believe, at PAX East. So keep your eyes and ears open for that. Uh, we can't wait uh, to show you how this thing looks. It's just been amazing to watch it come together. So uh, <laughs> I guess I'll keep it short and sweet. I thank you all for your time. We're very excited about this product. We're very excited about our partnership with Sony and what the future has in store for us. Uh, hopefully, that's world domination. Uh, so again, thanks, guys. Uh, we appreciate the time being here and uh, just to be here for this amazing event tonight. The PlayStation 4 is looking killer. Uh, we hope to see you all adventuring across the darkened fields of Tristram very soon. So thanks again, guys. Have a great night. Yes, it's me again. Now, there's one more partner I'd like to invite on stage tonight. This publisher is known for making not just some of the biggest video games on the planet, but some of the biggest entertainment franchises in any medium on the planet. They are one of the driving forces behind turning video games into mainstream popular culture. It's my pleasure to welcome to the stage the CEO of Activision Publishing, Eric Hirschberg. Thanks, Andy. Thank you, Andy, for the kind words. But of course, uh, we couldn't do what we do without companies like Sony building incredible platforms like the PS4 that have brought interactive entertainment into the living rooms of hundreds of millions of people around the world. Activision has supported every single one of Sony's platforms and has created some of the most iconic hits on each and every one of them. And our commitment to the PS4 will be no different. We plan on supporting the PS4 with multiple blockbuster titles from our best developers during the launch window. And we're looking forward to sharing more with you in the coming months. But what I can tell you though today is that our developers and our technology teams are uniformly really excited about how Sony is approaching the PS4. We're excited to be a part of bringing the next generation of great games to the next great gaming platform from Sony. Now there is one developer in particular who we're working with who we think has been absent from the PlayStation Nation for too long now. And we thought, what better way for us to show our support for the unveiling of the PS4 than to bring PlayStation gamers together with one of the best developers in the world that you haven't been able to play on a PlayStation for over a decade. And of course, I'm talking about the one and only Bungie. Last week in Seattle, we gave the world its first glimpse into our ambitious 10-year project together called Destiny. And Jason Jones, the visionary developer, co-founder of Bungie, and project director of Destiny, wanted to say a few words about why he's excited to bring Destiny to the PS4 and also to unveil a few more glimpses of in-engine footage here tonight for the first time. Take a look. Hey, everybody. It's great to be here. I want to tell you a little bit about what Bungie's been doing for the last few years. After Halo, we ask ourselves the question, what next? What's worth doing? When you have a studio with this much talent, what are you pointed at? How could we take a genre that we know and love so well, the first person shooter, and turn it on its head again? And our answer is destiny. Bungie's next great FPS. In Destiny, we've created a fantastic new universe for players to explore, full of mystery and adventure. We've built a persistent online world where players grow and customize their characters. And we focused from the beginning, not just on the great competitive experience that players demand from a shooter, but to make sure that playing Destiny cooperatively with your friends 
was gonna blow your mind. Destiny is gonna be amazing on PlayStation 4. It's a great piece of gear. And we can't wait to see what PlayStation fans do when they set foot in our world for the first time. That's, thank you. That makes two Jason Jones sightings inside of a week, so you'll hear from, here, from him again in 2025. Um, uh, Destiny is an ambitious project. Uh, it's what we're calling the first shared world shooter. It's something we're, put a lot of, we're putting a lot of creativity and resources behind. We're very excited to bring it to the PlayStation 4. And to tell you a little bit more about it, uh, it's now my pleasure to introduce some of the key leaders at Bungie. Andreas Jenkins, John T. Barnes, Marty O'Donnell, and Bungie's president, Harold Ryan. Hello, PlayStation Nation. When Bungie became independent, we were really excited about bringing our games to a bigger audience. Our partnership with Activision, and now Sony, will allow us to do just that. Destiny is an ambitious and innovative game. It's a perfect fit for the PlayStation 4. Like the PlayStation 4, Destiny is an online connected experience. Like the PlayStation 4, Destiny lets you access the content you love from multiple devices. And like the PlayStation 4, Destiny is designed to entertain you for years to come. We're proud to announce today that at the launch of Destiny, both the PS4 and the PS3 versions will be available. And even better, we'll be creating exclusive playable content just for the PlayStation community. We look forward to sharing more details with you in the coming months. And from all of us at Bungie, thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Needless to say, we're ecstatic to bring Destiny and exclusive content to the PlayStation 4, and we know the Bungie fans will love it. To all of you who have joined us today, whether in the room or via live stream, thank you so much for being here. The arrival of PlayStation 4 presents an enormous opportunity to dramatically evolve the gameplay experience. From intensified power, to enhance social capabilities, to bigger, better, and more immersive gameplay, and a simple adaptive interface. We believe PlayStation 4 proves that we have more to offer than ever before. We look forward to continuing the conversation and demonstrating why PlayStation is the best place to play. Thank you very much for your time, and good night. trying to create are things that people have never experienced, magical moments that they're going to remember for the rest of their lives. I would like to make a small addition to the team.